How's everybody? Good, good. Everybody's good? Excellent. I know that last night's party was awesome. I saw it from my hotel window. I didn't get to experience it personally because I had to be an adult. But thank you for being here. I know it's uh, Wednesday, it's hump day, so hopefully uh, I won't be too tough on you. Um, I'll leave the quizzes to the last five minutes, so if you're not good with quizzes, leave before the end. I'm joking. We're going to get started here in about a minute or two, okay, guys? Um, one thing before we get started, uh, I'm going to ask that you guys work as a team. Um, this lab is a bit complex in the sense that you are actually going to be handed three separate OpenStack cloud regions. So I'm going to ask you guys to try and pair up to at least teams of three or more so that each person can own a region and kind of maybe handle the activities needed for that particular OpenStack region. So before we get started, think about teaming up three or more would be great. I do have limited resources, so that would be a further encouragement that I need you guys to kind of team up together a little bit, okay? So thank you. In about two minutes, we'll get started. Yeah. Give them two minutes. I don't see anybody moving. I need movement. I need movement. I need people together, same row, next to each other. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm being a bit of a tyrant, but that's how it is. Um, the clicker here. Okay. You know, left. You go left, you go right. So it works pretty well. But I'll, I'll hand it over to you once we get there. And I'll let you, of course, introduce yourself because that's the only right thing to do. <laughs> you okay? Team, team team right. Cool. <laughs> Chris was like, oh, I didn't think I was going to say anything. I was like, no, I'm like, you going to say something. Yeah. Some water. No, you got some. Okay. Cool. Give them another minute, and then I don't think we'll need the full ninety, but we'll see. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, I know it is Wednesday, it's hump day, everybody's tired. You've been in a lot of sessions and learned a lot of stuff. So hopefully this is just one more thing you can take home with you. So today we're going to talk about how to set up active, active cloud regions. And uh, my dear friend here, Melvin, my name is Walter Bentley. Um, I'm a cloud solution architect. I'll go a little bit more about me. This is my dear partner in crime here, Melvin. Um, and we're going to just here to present through what we mean by active, active cloud regions and show you how to go ahead and do that. Okay, um, get started. I won't spend too much time on me. If you've been to any of my workshops, you know that I like to hacker people. Uh, so uh, make sure to uh, uh, let me know who you are so that I can uh, you know, make fun of you a little bit. But I've been in IT for about 17 years. Production support is my background. I call myself a New Yexin now because I am actually a native New Yorker who just moved to Texas five months ago. So I coined the term New Yexin, copyright it, you can't use it unless you pay me. Um, love cloud, love sharing knowledge, motorcyclists, um, and uh, yeah, so that's a little bit about me and some of the companies I work for. Feel free to follow me on Twitter um, and uh, my blog. I always put out stuff about OpenStack and Ansible, so if you want to check out some stuff about that, check out my blog. There's some interesting stuff on there about that, okay? So without further ado, I'd love to let my dear partner in crime here, Melvin, introduce himself. All right, thanks, Walter. Appreciate it. So, Melvin Hillsman, uh, been in Rackspace for a couple years. Uh, been in love with OpenStack for for about four four years. Uh, IT professional for seven, as you can all pretty much see right there. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm just reading. <laughs> uh, I currently just moved over to OSIC Ops team. Uh, so, if any of you guys are or, or gals for that matter or uh, in operations, I'd love to talk with you afterwards and get your card and you can get mine. Uh, you don't have to take mine. Uh, interesting thing about me, I'm afraid of heights, but I like skydiving. Guess that's kind of 
a problem. <laughs> um, Mr. Hillsman is my Twitter handle, uh, but I'm Mr. Hillsman everywhere. Mr. Hillsman.com, Mr. Hillsman at Gmail, IRC is Mr. Hillsman, so if there's a Mr. Hillsman, it's probably me. Yep. Cool. Thank you, Melvin. Um, we're going to start out with some ground rules. Um, we're all adults here, so I don't know. I figure I don't have to say this, but I'm going to say it just because it's one of those things. So I'm going to ask you to turn off your cell phones or at least put them on silent. Um, and if I catch it rings, I'm taking it. Um, right now, I'm sporting an iPhone 5. It's kind of old. So if you got those six S's, make sure you put them out and make sure you leave them on ring, okay? Um, requirement, ask questions. You must ask questions. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Do not be afraid to raise your hand. I'm here to help you. That's our purpose is to be here to help you. So make sure you ask questions. Um, any side conversations, please take them outside. I like hearing myself talk more than anything else, so I don't want to hear everybody else. No, I'm just kidding. But please, if you have a side conversation, I know you guys are all IT professionals. If you've got to take care of something, just please step outside. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to need you guys to work in groups. All right? Uh, I know it's a bit of a struggle for us ex uh, introverts to work with other people, but I need you to work with other people, um, primarily because we have limited resources, and I want as many people to take advantage of the lab as possible, okay? So we're going to need to work at least teams of two or three. And of course, the materials are at this link here. Google's sh uh, shortened, uh, URL shorteners are case sensitive, so keep note of the case. Th that URL will be posted again, so don't worry. You don't have to rush to copy it down now, but that's where the materials for the um, lab will be. Um, before we get started, again, can emphasize more teams of three or more. So when I go to hand out the course material, I'm going to need to at least see three people sitting together, uh, uh, willing to work together before I hand it out. Um, the student ID and instructions to connect to your OpenStack regions are on the handout that I'm going to give you. Um, and what you're getting, da -da -da -da, so each team will get three OpenStack Libre Release cloud regions. And it's going to be two regions um, called Alpha and Beta that are full OpenStack. Core, o core services deployments that are going to be your, your separate regions. And then you'll have one third region, which I call your admin region. And it's a slimmed down version of the other regions. Instead of running all the OpenStack services, it only will be running Horizon and Keystone. And you'll learn why uh, you only need that for an admin region. Okay. Um, and well, like I said, if you take each member of your team to be responsible for one region, it kind of cuts down the amount of work one guy has to do. There are a lot of commands you're going to have to cut and paste, or type, retype, however you wish to do. So I just want to try and divvy up that work as much as possible. Okay, guys? So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Melvin to, uh, to, get, to get us started, okay? All right. Thank you, Walsh. All right. So the active, active cloud approach. All right. So... <coughs> Here you look at the slide, right? Basically, you see there's a number of different regions. Okay, again, your region A will be your alpha, region B is your beta, and then you've got you've got uh, Keystone and Horizon, which is sitting in between both of them. So, basically, re regions essentially, right? It, multiple data centers. So you you have resources that span across uh, what these AZs are called availability zones. Okay. You can also have it oh, move quicker than it was supposed to. <laughs> sorry. That's all right. <laughs> sorry. See, that's what happened. I made slides, and then I made him present them, and then I booby trapped them. <laughs> Got him. That's how he does it. No. <laughs> all right. So, so basically, the whole idea, essentially, right, is you know, I'm, I'm not going to try to. I, I'm going to do it the way I would do it, right? So, Please. <laughs> <laughs> essentially, this, what you have is you have resources that are in, you know, multiple data centers across us uh, in, in different regions of the world. It could be, um, could be in the same data center for that matter, right? Basically the idea is I've got, re I've got a full OpenStack cloud in one place and another OpenStack cloud in another place, right? And I want to be able to uh, share the, sh u utilize both those regions together. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> he can't blame me for that one. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, so again, this is the architecture, right? You've got Nova Glance Heat Neutron Sender in each region, okay? And then you've got Keystone and Horizon. It's being shared between those. It's your admin. That's your, basically your admin uh, region. In, in, our, in, in this class, uh, workshop, it's the admin region. So you're, you're sharing identity, right? Roles, uh, projects, okay? Those are all in, in, in one place. Uh, you can... You can um, 
uh, utilize the command line interface or Horizon in, in the admin region um, to manage both of those uh, region A and B together. All right, so here's, uh, here's the lab overview, okay? Um, each region's endpoint, uh, so you want to inventory each region's uh, endpoints and take note of the URLs, okay? So you want to make sure you're doing that. Uh, create user service accounts in the admin, in the admin region. And, uh, create service on the admin region. So does that, does that make sense? Right, everybody's okay with that? Create user, user service accounts in the admin region, create service on the admin region, okay? Then you register each region's endpoints to the admin region, all right? And configure each of the region's services to authenticate against the admin region identity service instead of the local region's identity service, right? So region A and region, uh, region alpha, re region beta, right? What, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that they're utilizing the admin region, okay, for these, for these uh, services. And then use your clouds, uh, hopefully, Everything goes straight, <laughs> you don't have to troubleshoot anything, and then you'll have fun. Otherwise, you won't have fun. <laughs> All right, so please go to the URL right there and connect to the lab environment. Cool, thank you, Melvin, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. So what we're gonna do now is, um, yeah, we can actually, thank you. Um, Pull up that URL. What I'm going to do is, is I actually have handouts, and I'm going to give five to Mr. Melvin here, and I'm going to take five, right? So again, limited resources, right? We need to at least see people with at least three or more, and you will work as a team. So for example, these three gentlemen here, I'm assuming, will be team one, all right? These are your credentials, and these are the IP addresses that you'll need to connect to your region the username and password that you'll need, okay, to connect to your region. Please only connect to your region and not anyone else's. Don't get fancy, all right? Yes. Yes, I will. So you guys are going to work together, correct? Remember, I have limited resources. So if you're in the back and you want to do the lab, you're going to have to come on down because by the time I get to you, I might not have any more pieces of paper, all right? Not to say I'm trying to do bait and switch. I'm just saying. So I, I see it. I see a, a loose grouping of people here. Do you guys want to work together? Interested? All right, if you can get together, that would be great. You guys will be team three. I'm gonna put that there, okay? We're running out, We're running out. You wanna to work together? You guys wanna to work together, I assume. All right, you guys will be team four. All right, I see a lot of people in this row here. You guys, are, and again, you're willing to work with more than teams of three. It can be more than teams of three. I just said three is the minimum, okay? You are good? Okay. I, I only got one. I only got one, man. All right. So, so what I can do is, for anyone who did not get a handout, come to me at the end, and I will give you your own resources so that you can do your lab at home, okay? You can absolutely get that option. Just come see me at the end, all right? Okay? So you, you guys still want to work on it now or you want to do it at home? You work on it? All right, there you go. All right, but you can still come see me at the end, all right? So for you guys, come talk to me at the end. You get your own servers for a week to do this lab, all right? Okay? Just come see me, all right? So you should be pulling up this URL on your machines. There are a set of instructions at this URL on GitHub. There are steps 1, 2, 3, 3A, 3B, and 4. Obviously, I want you guys to start at step 1. Step 1, just basically getting you connected to your OpenStack regions. Okay, use the material, use the IP addresses on your handout and the credentials there. Let me know when everybody is good and going on step 1, all right? What was I gonna say? I don't remember now, my brain is on screensaver. I was gonna say something to you, but I don't remember.
right, so everybody should be looking at the instructions that are up on the screen here right now. Let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger. There we go. That's better. Okay, so the first thing is you're going to connect to your alpha region using your credentials. You're going to execute an LXC command, and you may say to yourself, why do I have to execute an LXC command? And what the heck is LXC? So LXC is the original container format, right, way before Docker even thought about being Docker. That's part of the Ubuntu operating system. And with Ansible, OpenStack Ansible, if you're not familiar with that uh, way of deploying OpenStack, the OpenStack services are deployed in containers called LXC containers. Yes? No, 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 password should work. It has to work. <laughs> oh, no, no, for Horizon. Okay, so, uh, so on the piece of paper that I handed out, there's two sets of credentials. There's credentials just to gain access to your OpenStack regions, and then there's credentials to gain access to Horizon. They are separate credentials, but they're both on your piece of paper, okay? So OpenStack services are deployed in containers. So in order to see what containers are running on your OpenStack control plane, you need to execute that lxc-ls-fancy command. And it will list out all the containers that are running on your control plane. This exercise is to get you familiar with your OpenStack environment. It's not doing anything really special. It's more of an inventory, as Melvin highlighted. Let me know how you guys progress and when you're ready to move on, OK? So, if you, yeah, you have to join a group, dude. I'm sorry. I ran out of, you know, it's very hard to build. So basically what I've built is 30 OpenStack regions on our public cloud. So to go past that, I would have to ask for special permission to increase my resources. Uh, so I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Rackspace is a bit of Nazi around uh, the whole open pu public cloud and our consumption of it. So, yes. Okay, so yeah, so each container that runs is given two IP addresses. It's given a 10 dot something address, which is a, a local address that you can use to get to a container locally. And then it's given a second address, the 172 address. The 172 address is an address that you can actually connect to from outside of that control plane. All right, so it's just, it's just given two addresses, but you always want to use that 172 address, all right, to connect to containers. The 10 dots are just local for the LXC to manage the containers. Okay. Everybody's doing okay in step one. So a URL suffix is anything when you see the colon and then after it, right? So that's the suffix to that URL, right? So the prefix of a URL would be HTTPS or HTTP colon slash slash. You got your IP address and then the suffix is anything after the colon. So colon, uh, uh, 35357 slash v3, which is Keystone, or uh, I don't remember the other ports. I'm, I'm sorry, it's Wednesday. <laughs> I used to memorize that stuff. Everybody's doing good in step one. It gets harder on step two, okay? Just preparing you. All right. We're going to start talking about what step two is. So go open up step two that's on that GitHub repository, that link that you guys went to. And uh, let's talk about that for a second here, all right? So the process of step two, the reason why you have to do step two is, is what we're trying to accomplish in step two is, is we're going to connect to that admin region. So what was unique about the admin region that we brought out is the admin region is only running Horizon and Keystone as a service. So it does not know about Nova, Neutron, Glance, Cinder. It doesn't know about any of those other services. And you want it to keep it that way, right? But in order to use those services that are on the other regions, that are separate regions, you have to tell your admin region about those services, right? So step two steps you through the process of creating the service account. Because you know when you create an OpenStack service on a region, you have to create the service account. Then you actually have to create the service by creating the endpoint. So these instructions are going to do that. They're going to help you create your service, create your service account, register the endpoints, and uh, 
yeah, we'll get going from there, okay? So one thing to keep in mind, be careful with copy and pasting from GitHub. Sometimes with single quotes, it'll give you this, this wacky looking quote that's not a single quote. So just keep conscious of that when you copy and paste those commands. I've seen that personally over and over again. It's extremely annoying, but such is life. So you should be connecting to your admin region to execute the commands in step two, the admin region. And keep in mind, when you get down to line 43, where you're going to register your endpoints, you need to insert the alpha region's IP address or the beta region's IP address on certain lines, right? So don't just paste the command as it is. You have to substitute and put in and replace those IP addresses. You see how I have it highlighted there as an example, right? Everybody doing good? All right, I won't keep disturbing you. I know you got to focus. Yes. Three regions where yes. Three regions they are running their own containers. Yes. Their own okay. Yes. Now, um, so the bigger, what is the bigger picture that you're trying to show on this point? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So the bigger picture that we're trying to demonstrate here is to show that you can manage multiple region, OpenStack regions from one centralized place, right? Because right now you could manage alpha and manage beta separately, and there's no issues there. Have a set of users there, have a set of users here. They can't cross talk to each other, right? right. So by having a middleman or admin region, you can actually talk to that admin region and choose which region you want to talk to, alpha, beta. It's very similar to like, uh, I hate to use the example because you know, they're our competitor, but Amazon, 
right? When you log into Amazon, there's a feature opportunity to pick which region you want to deploy your instances in, right? right? This is the same thing. I basically made you an Amazon, right? Made you a centralized admin region that you can manage multiple regions resources, spin up a, an instance here or there from one Horizon dashboard, right? The only thing you specify in your request is what region you want to spin it up in. Same thing as Amazon. Okay, so when we do OpenStack user create, so we go into admin, we say OpenStack user create project for plans, no one is on each. Yes. Right? And then we um, add these users, right? Right. Um, so basically, essentially what we're doing is creating admin, having legs in both. Right? Yes, absolutely. Right? Yep, creating admin to know about those separate regions endpoints and when you go to ask admin cloud to do something, mm -hmm. it will go talk to those regions, okay. right? It, it's not talking to itself, because remember, the admin region only runs Keystone and Horizon. So, right. so it's basically a placeholder for all the regions. Yes, right? yes, so absolutely, absolutely, okay. absolutely. And you can do that with 10 regions, 20 regions, 30 regions, it's no limit how many endpoints you can register. But what if an admin goes down? Right, admin well, again, and, th and that's the point where if you lose an admin region, you still have your regions available, and you can still make direct API calls to it, right? The only difference is, is that Keyst if you centralize Keystone, it may have a problem there, but it will still keep, keep functioning, but your authentication may become to have a problem, right? So you want to put that admin region in a, probably the most secure place as possible, and maybe even have multiple admin regions, because you can do that too. You don't have to have one admin region. You can have multiple. Sit them behind a load balancer, boom, right? So that's an option. Again, we didn't go that route because that was just another layer of complexity, but that, that would be what you would do there. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not, it's, it's not easy to take 100 OpenStack commands and copy and paste them. I know. I apologize, but this is the only way it can be done. <laughs> and uh, I will make my slides available. These lab materials will be there. And anyone who wants to try it again at home, I will give them three OpenStack servers to try at home as well, okay? Yes? What, the admin region, the IP address for the admin region is right there. Oh, this uh, I mean, I mean, that's what? part of the Yeah, you need to, Put in the alpha IP address, which is on the handout, and the beta IP address, which is on the handout. Oh, uh, reading is a prerequisite. What's that? Yes, they are. So it's these endpoints or these endpoints? No, you put in, to be clear, you're not putting in a 172 address to register an endpoint, right? Those are internal addresses. You're using the Alpha and beta's IP address that's on the piece of paper. Okay. <laughs> so if you did that, yeah, you gotta, you may have to delete some endpoints and re-register some. Please. Yeah. 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 One seven two addresses are just internal. You can't use that over over a, a WAN, right? So well, you can if you register here. So OpenStack endpoint space delete <coughs> and the UUID of the endpoint you created. And to get the UUID, you do OpenStack space endpoint space list and the UUID of those endpoints will be listed there. And you can just take that ID and delete them, okay? So the command is OpenStack endpoint space delete. I know it's complicated, I'm sorry again, but this is how it is. <laughs> <laughs> you have a question? No, you okay? Yeah. So, so imagine that these alpha and beta regions are in two data centers separate from each other, right? So IP space, you got to use public IP spaces to do it, right? So just imagine that to be, be uh, the approach here. Yes. Well, again, this is meant to be like a centralized dashboard. So if you have two companies that are trying to share a region, then you would probably not have them share that, or if that's, if that's a concern of yours, right? If you're looking for isolation or security, you wouldn't do this. This is to keep you from having to maintain two sets of users, right? 
and it'll also give you the ability to take users to use both regions. Because without doing that, you got to do back-end database. You got to copy the UIDs of users from one region to another one and do it in MySQL. And it gets ugly and weird, in my opinion. That's my humble opinion. Yeah. So this keeps it clean, right? Yeah. It's like an LDAP, right? Yeah. That's what admin is playing. Yeah. Yes. What's that? Right. So right now they're stepping through. Um, so the approach that we're taking here is we're setting up an admin region which runs just minimal services to control two separate OpenStack regions. So what they're doing right now is they're logging into the admin region and registering the services that are on the separate regions. Okay. Because remember, uh, the admin region only runs Keystone and Horizon, mm -hmm. so it doesn't have Nova, Neutron, Glance, any of those other services. But you want to register those services from the separate regions on the admin on the admin server, right? So the IP addresses and endpoints are going to go out to separate places, right? So that's what they're doing right now. Okay. If you want to do the lab at home, just come talk to me. I can give you uh, some resources to do that. Okay. No problem. Everybody hanging out, hanging in there. Yes. Yeah. Did you already no, 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 I didn't. So you'll find that you're registering endpoints for internal, you're registering endpoints for public. So the way it works is OpenStack itself, when talking service to service, likes to use internal, right? And then you need to register public if you want it to allow access to come from outside the OpenStack cloud. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's just uh, kind of uh, like a person who just goes and fetches and do whatever it wants to, right? And right. that's it, right? right? It itself doesn't have anything right. on it, right? Right, correct. So why do we need internal? Networks? So the admin region needs to be able to talk to those separate regions. It can't talk to those separate regions over internally published endpoints or internal endpoints. It, it can't talk to it. So you have to register it with the external endpoints so that they can talk to it externally. OpenStack is weird like that. I'm not going to even try and diagnose that for you guys, but certain calls, it'll use an internal endpoint. Certain calls, it'll use an external, a public endpoint. Certain calls, it'll use an admin endpoint. You can't tell it which endpoint to use. OpenStack just does what it, what it feels it should do. Right. So internal is public is what you have to register. Okay. That's just the way it is. I tried to do one or the other, and things that weren't working. So this covers you. Again, you, knew, you lose nothing by registering both those endpoints. There is nothing lost. Doesn't mess up any of your functionality. Doesn't take up anything. So you're good. Okay. Everybody still working on step two? Where, where, how, where is everybody? All right. I'll give you a few more minutes before I go to step three A, because I got to keep you moving. It's important. We won't. We won't make it through. <laughs> I think I lost my partner in crime. So b don't start step three until you let, me, you let me know you guys are ready.
Okay. If you're still working on step two, I don't judge you. It is hard. Um, I am going to kind of talk through what we're going to do with steps three and A a little bit here. If you, don't, if you can pause for a second. Um, and like I said, if you're not able to finish it or if you ran into problems, um, just come talk to me at the end and I will give you some resources that you can go in and do this at home. Probably a lot more comfortable um, to do it at home. Okay. So the thing I just want to talk about with you guys before we start step 3A is the fact that configuring OpenStack services. So if you have not had the pleasure of configuring OpenStack services, meaning actually going in and changing the config files, you'll personally know that it is painful and tedious. Um, and the reason for that is that you have to have a super level of attention to detail because any typo that you make in your config file can cause your service to stop running. And you will literally chase after it for hours. Okay, so first thing you learn is messing with these config files is tedious, right? So you want to try your best to not make any mistakes in your config files. So for that very reason, in step 3A and 3B, we're going to use a helping aid to kind of help us do that. We're going to use Ansible, right? And the reason why I'm going to have you guys use the Ansible commands instead of going in and, and, and configuring the files directly, of which you can if you're feeling saucy. I'm not going to stop you from doing it. But using Ansible allows you to focus exactly and execute a command that goes actually after the exact edit you need to make. It makes the edit, and you don't have to worry about any other typos. Okay, So that's the reason for that. So we're going to use Ansible. So in step 3A, when you go and look at that, you're going to see that you're going to be executing multiple Ansible commands, and that's the reason for that. Um, th so just wanted to kind of show in a, some more detail as to what the Ansible command you're going to be executing, why you're executing it, so that when you see it, you kind of understand what we're doing here, right? So um, at the very top here, this is the basic Ansible command that you're going to be executing. Ansible, you're going to tell it what host to run against, what module to use, which will be shell, and you're going to give it an ad hoc Linux command to do, um, or CLI command to do. Um, so, for example, if the host is a glance container, uh, we're going to use shell as your module, and the ad hoc command is using sed. So if you have never used sed before, you need to remove yourself from underneath that rock and explore what sed is. Sed is the greatest tool ever, in my opinion, because it can go in and do stuff to files, replace, quick replace, uh, find and replace. Uh, it can do so many things, right? So we're going to use a sed command, and the sed command that we're going to be doing is we're basically going to say, go to this com file, glance dash API, look for this thing, auth underscore URL equals, and that thing, and then replace it with this thing, which is the blue line, right? And of course, remember, we've got to substitute those alpha region IP addresses that are on your handout for every one of those commands, right? Um, and what it does, and if you're looking at it, what's in the red box, that's a sample command of what exactly we're doing, right? So we're going to go in and make a whole bunch of changes to a config file. You may say, why the heck do we have to do that? So keep in mind, each of your regions, when created, are pointing to Keystone, right? In each of their separate regions, which is cool. But in order for this L admin region thing to work out the way it's supposed to, you need to tell your services that they need to authenticate back to the admin region, right? So when you're in Keystone as a user in the admin region and you make a request, your token that's valid on the admin region can then be filtered out, or it's not really filtered out, but what happens is when the service gets evoked, it can then authenticate, it can then authorize your token that you already have from your admin region, right? So you have to go into both your alpha and beta regions and tell your OpenStack services to talk to your alpha region's keystone, right? So that's why we have to go in and make these config file changes, right? Everybody follow me? All right, I'm gonna present it one more time so that everybody's clear. You have to configure your alpha and beta region to talk to your admin region's keystone. And the way you do that is by going in and making services config file updates, OK? All right, let's get started, 3A. If you're ready for 3A, start 3A. If you're still working on 2, no problem. Keep working on 2. Let me know how I can help, OK? Sure. Yeah. And I was checking the file, and probably I might miss some. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, uh, yeah. So if you remove the endpoint, it, 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 uh, so yeah. 
So if you remove the int, so let's do just do a quick uh, open stack space endpoint space list for me. I just want to see where where we where we are. Oh, it's just list, not dash dash list. Yeah, I know it's like some things are dash, some things are not. Okay, so yeah, so it's gone. Um, which region did you do this in? Is this alpha or uh, or admin? Just admin. Should I have a history? Those are the regions I remade. Which were this public, uh, this public. I'm, I'm trying to follow what would happen here. Can you pull up the instructions for me? Because I don't want to. Okay. okay. So the alpha region. So you read. Did you register these endpoints? Yeah, I did. So I registered, and then at this point, says list all identity ones and remove disable ones with the yeah, 172 one. That's what I was doing. Right after that point, I cannot authenticate anymore. Okay. And you you did this. You created these with the public IP address of the admin region. Yeah. Uh, public. Yeah. See, this step is you have to create. You're creating an, an Keystone endpoint on the admin region, but just using the admin region's IP address. Right, but I use this internal IP, not the... You use that IP, yeah. that address? Yeah. Should be working still. <coughs> um. Is it because when I go into that admin file, it still shows me the public IP list right there? Not the 104. That should be fine because the instructions should not have told you to disable the internal address. Uh, just go back to the instructions for me one more time. Sure. It should have. It should be telling you to disable the public and the admin, but not the internal. Right. So if you disable the internal. No, I was just at step. You're just there. Thing then. I was just looking for anything 172. Right. And trying to remove. I only remove two. Alright, so let me see which ones, what, what happened. So you that's disabled the, the 78, 78, which is the admin, that's perfect. You disabled the public, that's perfect. Internal should still be there. And enabled. No, I mean after that, immediately it started showing me errors. Like, auth required. Hmm. Well, you can try and force it to use this public one, so you can try and change it to that in that add keystone and restart keystone and see if that makes things any better. Uh, so go to keystone config? Yeah, so you can't get to it from there. So how are you just showing me the keystone config? Oh, no, I was not showing it. Uh, I was just showing it. Oh, you were showing it opener. Okay, yeah. so yes. Yeah, so why don't you try and yeah, go in there and change that yeah change that address and see and then do source again and see if uh yeah you're smart man yeah and just do any open stack command open stack space user list Thinking about it, probably will work. I guess. Nobody. Yeah, because it's trying to route back out to itself. Oh. And it's it's yeah, it's because that's why the internal one stays, is so that it doesn't do this. Mm -hmm. But I don't know why it's yours is behaving this way. I have to go look at my example then. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not not fine really. <laughs> um, uh, I've already pointed all of mine at you. <laughs> have you? <laughs> on okay. Facebook and Tuna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Alright, yeah, this, uh, oh, yeah. Um, let me see something. Do you want to take a chair? Uh, no, 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 I don't want you to, uh, to leave your seat. See, it's still trying to curl against uh, the public, right? Uh, against an address that is not probably even active anymore. Mm -hmm. 172. This must be something in config, right? 331. Yeah, but why is it pointing to 31? So you registered those other endpoints already? Yeah. I can quickly check the history and see if. Maybe no, maybe it's, it's, it's right, because it's 31 is your beta region, it's trying to authenticate, but why is it? Alright, I have to take a second. Oh, <laughs> <it's good. laughs> uh, why is it making authentication crests against itself? One seven two. What the heck is one seven two? All is well in that world. no idea where it's getting that 172 from. Because 31 is your beta domain, so why is it sender trying to send a request there? I can't even see the endpoints to even know where the problem is. Okay. Let's do something else. Public uh, admin of another public. 
public, which is probably disabled. It doesn't show it though, but no, they were all enabled. <coughs> yeah, they're not. I think only this one is disabled. Yeah, only that one is disabled, which is your admin. Right. So let's let's fix that. Um. Yeah, now we're getting we're getting real hacky right now. <laughs> uh, I don't remember uh, yeah, I don't remember all the commands. Um Oof, yeah, testing my SQL knowledge right now. I'm gonna use my other brain. Update table name. Because I had to do it with that. That's what it did. Yeah, there. it was volume. Yeah. yeah. It was um. You get a ghost te volume. Tempest. Right. Would blow up, and it wouldn't clean up, so it would kind of leak out from the stage. So yeah, we did a search and we said, yeah, go ahead. Set column B. Okay. Also, you were using fiber channel as a backend. Yeah. And that's why we had issues. Yeah. So in binary case now, in the room. Yes. Just give me one second, because I'm afraid I'm gonna tell you the wrong answer, and then I'm gonna screw you up. Screw you up. So just give me. Uh, literally, I think I'm at I'm at a point now where I'm um, I'm done with these guys. <laughs> they 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 broke it too badly, and that's the. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually probably my instructions that broke it for them. So. Unknown column. What? What, what? 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 Where column name equals value? I thought I gave it that. Where ID equals. Update. Update. Endpoint. Set. Enabled one. Where ID. That's to say. Where ID equals. Maybe it's the spaces that it's getting angry about. Is table name endpoint or keystone? Table name? No, I'm on the keystone table. Yeah, so so I think update and a table name. Table name method? Yeah, t t yeah t oh. table name is, is, endpo is endpoint. Unknown oh, column. Why is it saying under no column when the column name is asking for c some column and then a value? Mm -hmm. ID is the column. Maybe it's <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. No problem. It happens. So let's test this and see if this is a uh, fixed fixed us. I don't know. I feel uh, I'm in between on it. <laughs> Should be. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, just yeah. All right. If anyone else had the same problem where they did they messed with the endpoint and disabled it by mistake, we can do a database hack. So don't the world is not over. So I just went in there and changed the IP address that you had in there, that 172.30.238.2, with uh, just a holder for the service name. Sure. Am I correct in assuming that what we want to do is go and look at the Nova, uh, for instance, uh, server that's running here, um, and 
Yeah, so for the specific one, right? So Nova API container, I would go and replace that with the IP address for the Nova API container. No, what you want to make sure to do, you need to use the public IP address that's on the handout for the place for this placeholder. So, so you that's done. Yeah, that's done. Yep. Yeah. So what the address that's used is, the, yeah, so to get to where you were going is that the address is not that address. It's actually the, the load balance address, and, and I, I can't go into the details of that, but it's oh 172. Okay. So it is that IP address. Yes, yeah, it is literally in okay. the file. It is literally so that IP address. The IP address you need to replace was your admin. Yes. Okay, region yeah. IP address. Okay. Or the beta, alpha beta, depending alpha on what, beta, what yeah. you need to do. But, yeah, that is the case. Okay. Sorry, yeah. No that IP address that's in the file for the 172, whether it be 30 or 31, is the address so you don't have to change that address you only have to change what's in the the brackets okay so you just re re okay you rock stars and then you try to go to don't tell me it doesn't work it doesn't yeah. <laughs> so if you did 3a and 3b you go to horizon it doesn't work it generally means that the admin region when it can't communicate to one of the region services specifically nova it won't let you log in. Why? I don't know. Talk to the OpenStack developers about that. So, oh, Horizon's not up at all. Hey, that's a big problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's your admin region. All right. Well, get into that CLI. Connect to it through SSH, and let's see what's going on with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you, you know, you don't you don't have to have it, but you 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 get an error message when you don't have it. That's the the fun thing. But Nova, if Nova, if you register a Nova endpoint on the admin region and that endpoint is registered incorrectly, and you go to log into Horizon, you won't it won't let you log in. That's a feature. <laughs> You don't know about that feature? That was a feature. That was mentioned in the last OpenStack summit. You must have missed it. No, um, I'm joking. All right. What do you got going here, man? Oh, because you're, well, did you do sudo su? Oh, I bet I didn't. No, you didn't. Put in that OpenStack password, man, yeah. and you'll be good. So you guys, Horizon, you, you, you working your magic? No, yet. Okay. Yeah, you got to do LIC dash uh, LIC. Yeah. Remember, it's a container. Yeah. Uh, it would be the Horizon. Horizon container. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. No, no worries. Not to rush you. Uh, LIC. Well, you can do SSH to it as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do send enter. No, it's the whole thing. Yeah, we just can't get that one, but that's good. Okay. And just do a PS uh, grep, uh, you know, grep for Apache too. Let's see if that guy's running. Okay. Right, and yeah, restart that guy if you can. But that, uh, yeah, it, it's over HTTPS and it's a self-signed certificate, so it's going to give you an error yeah, uh, yeah, message, but, I mean but it should it still. It, it would say that only if there's something responding. Otherwise right. You would just oh, look. Comes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe there was a restart needed somewhere in there. Again, uh, running OpenStack on a cloud instance is not cool. It's meant for test and development. It's not stable, right? You find all kinds of weird things that happen. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of bare metal just kind of, just kind of hanging out in my, in my uh, office there. <laughs> What's going on? Sure. 
Yes. I, I did disable uh, alter, alter region in this mm -hmm. one, so it's the admin became error like this, so I restored him back, mm -hmm. but my new admin, admin region keystone mm -hmm. has a 95 as a trick, so it has Q is for alt, and 95 for trick is 95, so when I do, st if I would change Taos file, uh, if I change Taos file to 95, then the region should say that the yeah, so yeah, you have to use the dot two. Oh, I have yeah, to you have to use the dot two so because it's, it's still so even with if we update it, I get a single five to the admin. We still use dot two for update. for intern. Yeah, so for internal, it still has to use dot two because what happens is running on each of your OSA clouds is HA proxy in front of your services. Ah. So you have to use the dot two. You can't use the container address. Okay. It gets angry. Okay, thank <laughs> no problem. But hopefully you should be you you okay or yeah, so there is no okay. Problem. Okay. Yes. What's going on, man? So we're getting unauthorized. Uh, like it's based on the well, uh, well, I guess it's successful but unauthorized. Like password's right, but right. authorization's not working. So can you show me your endpoints that you have uh, listed on your admin region? Okay. So what I'm just what, just to kind of verbally give you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for region one, right? Because that's that's the only one that's running Keystone. So you have an internal address, beautiful. You have you've turned the and disabled the other uh, public. You created a new public, and that's the public address of your admin region. Yes, it is. Yep. Okay. Um, you created an admin and you disabled the internal admin region, mm -hmm. and then you created another admin region with the right address 103.23.206. All right, so I'm not sure exactly why it's happening. So just show me your open RC file, because you can see the internal one is still running. Yeah. So that's the address it should be hitting. Um, let's yeah, thank you. You read my mind. Two thirty-eight, two five hundred. That's it. So the only suggestion I can give to you, so are you able, so you're able to run OpenStack commands. Yeah, because you run OpenStack commands. But when you go to authenticate, so yeah, I guess. Yeah, authenticate Horizon, it gets you unauthorized. All right, so then let, let's look at the list again, because what's happened is, is, and this is what I was talking about. If you register an, an endpoint of a service on your admin region, but the region that you registered is not properly set up, Horizon won't let you log in. Okay. Why? I don't know. Specifically, the one to look for is Nova. So check all your Nova, right? So make sure your Nova endpoints you register here, your alpha and your beta, mm -hmm. are perfect. And then make sure that on the region, the Nova is configured properly to talk back to here. Okay? okay? Yeah, I'll check that. And make sure you restart those services when you make those config changes. Real important. Services won't change if you don't restart them. Side note, while we're talking, we have book signings this afternoon at the Rackspace Cantina. If you don't know what the Rackspace Cantina is, unfortunately, my book, I did my signing for today, so I don't actually have any more to offer up. But uh, 3 o'clock, 3.30, and 4 o'clock, there are going to be additional book signings at the Rackspace Cantina. They are free. The Rackspace Cantina is on 2nd and Trinity. It's literally right outside the OpenStack uh, conference, right on 2nd and Trinity. Please stop by. Free alcohol, free Wi-Fi. And complimentary free DJ. I will be DJing at the cantina at 3.30 today. So please stop by. Yes, that does explain my Twitter handle of DJ State Fly Pro. I am a DJ as well. So please stop by after 3.30 to the cantina. Sorry, my commercial programming is over now. <laughs> uh, we exploited that commission code from the Horizon log. Hmm. That's why it keeps bouncing up and down. Right. Yes. Were you able to log in? No. no. Actually, he said that uh, when I look earlier, it doesn't say like login. What team number are you? Two? I didn't have a problem with your cloud last night. I had a problem with five's cloud and eight's cloud, but not yours. Um, I'm just being honest with you. <laughs> so <laughs> Actually, uh, I've been, I saw that uh, we get it authenticated at some point. Oh. The Nova endpoint? Yeah, you're falling into the same trick as everybody yeah. else. Yeah. If you register Nova endpoint in your admin region and your region that you registered there is not configured properly, Horizon will not let you log in. Okay. And yeah, it'll so do weird security. things. So, so check in. Yeah, so check your alpha and your beta regions. Make sure that they're 
their keys the their server the Nova service is pointing to the admin keystone and make sure that on the admin region your endpoints for Nova are created properly. So make sure they point to the right address, the right ports. Really important. Yeah. All right. You're a smart guy, I'm gonna leave you to it, man. What? You're a smart guy, I'm gonna leave you to it. <laughs> Again, Islab is not exactly the easiest thing to do. But once you get it done, you don't have to do it again. <laughs> That's the key. Yes. I think we're having the same problem. Uh, so we can log into Horizon. Yep. Um, yep. So, so, so the suggestion, go whoever's doing your, whoever's managing the alpha and the beta region, mm -hmm. go in, make sure that your Nova services are configured to point back to the admin region's keystone, right? So remember those, those many said commands that you had to execute, make sure that everything is right. Because if it's not right, and make sure the service was restarted. Because yeah. if they weren't restarted and it's not right, then the admin region won't let you log in. It's a bug. It's a bug with Horizon and Nova. I don't know what it is. And I, I could give you a proof point. If you're having that problem, go into your admin region and disable the Nova endpoints that you created, and I get you, you bet you you'll be able to log in no problem. So it has to do with the Nova service. Generally, the Nova service. Yes. 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 Right. Well, he asked the same question. So you, what I would do is you would set up multiple admin regions, right? You can set, so they say, for example, you can have an admin region in site A, admin region in site B, put a, low a global load balancer in front of them. So if you lose one of your sites, you still have an ad. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. This example is not a production ready example per se, right? You would never have one of anything, right? So this is just an example. But you want to make sure you have redundancy. You can have redundant admin regions. There's nothing stopping that. Sorry. What's that, man? You alright? Yeah. I finally got it. Really? You think you. Okay. I kept going back and forth, like I walk out. Right. Like I start walking, stop, run back. Right. Until I finally You you level though. Yeah. Okay. So but I think I'm gonna just go go to sleep. Go lay down, man. We're good, we're good here. We're gonna be wrapping up soon, so let's go. Okay. Okay. So you, so you said you can curl the alpha and betas, Nova API, you get back a response, no issues. Um, let's take a look at your endpoints. They all look really good. I'm just going to focus on Nova because Nova is usually the one that's very mean. Yeah, that is pretty good Bluetooth range. Um, that's my boss talking, so uh, give me one second. Um, yeah, this is where I got, I ran into the same exact problems you guys ran into. Um, and it was, it all came down to the fact that there was one endpoint that was registered and on that region, it wasn't uh, connect, it wasn't configured right. And that was a mistake on my part. Um, And unfortunately, as you already know, you can spend hours trying to figure this out. <laughs> yes.
for the sake of time, has anyone able to step through and actually get it to work? Really? Excellent. So it works. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Um, <laughs> all I need is one. Um, yes. So as you can see, it is complex. All right. It's not a. It's not a uh, easiest thing, but you can automate it. You can once you understand the concept, you understand how to troubleshoot it. Um, in this setting, I know it's not exactly the easiest, specifically if you don't deal with the CLI or registering endpoints and things like that, but it does get easier, I promise you, and it does work. Um, and gentlemen, can you tell me what you had to do? Uh, restart the Nova API service. All right. All right, he restarted the Nova-API servers in each of the regions, all right, and now he's good to go. So maybe try that. But we're... Uh, Pretty much, we're at nearing the end. I think we're nearing the end, right? Yeah. I think it's supposed to be over soon. Um, as I said before, if you're interested in continuing the lab at home, I want to try it again with a fresh, new, non-tainted environment, just come talk to me, and I'll give you my business card. Just send me an email, and I will set it up for you, OK? So you're welcome to stay. And Keep hacking at it, and I'm here to answer your questions. Sure. What's that? What's not? What's not working? Yeah, you got it. You got you. So. I I, I don't know. <laughs> you, you can't you can't guarantee me that. Um. So what is it doing right now? It's not doing anything. No. You hit enter, right? <laughs> well, you got too many T's, no. HTT, HTTPS. No, no, that's all right. So, so now you get the lovely pleasure. So it's connecting, but it may not work. So you're gonna have to probably go in and check out your Horizon service and your admin region. Make sure that's running. How is it set that? So you just jump into the Horizon container on the admin server, okay. and just see if Apache 2 is running because it runs Horizon runs under Apache, okay. and just check that out. You may have to restart it. Right, as well as you may have to look at restarting Nova API on either regions, okay. because remember that was a problem that someone else had. Right, again, hello, welcome to OpenStack. <laughs> <coughs> yes. So I've got two data centers. Yes. Two regions. Great. So now my admin is going to go down if one of my data centers goes down. So yes. So I go in and disable those endpoints. Yes, but what I prefer for you to do is not have one admin region, but have multiple admin regions and have them sit behind a load balancer. And by doing that, you don't have one admin region. You have multiple admin regions. But, but, but if both admin regions are talking to alpha and beta, for, yes. when either, if alpha goes down, both admin regions go down. Well, that's not true. No, that's not, no, that's not true. See, so I understand what you're saying. And, and if you lose a region, your best option is to disable the endpoints for that region, right? Um, but if you do it in a way where you're pointing, so let's say if you have a region that's yeah, sitting I'm behind it. I'm not concerned about admin agent. Right, okay, I got it. You're concerned about it. Horizon. Right. I can't use Horizon to right. go down those endpoints. Right. right, but again, Horizon is always your back. Horizon should always be your backup mm -hmm. to right. OpenStack, yeah, right? Management, so management thinks so Horizon. Right. I, I think API. I understand. I understand. But if they lose, if they lose access to Horizon, it won't be, it won't be total end of the world. The environment is still up. That's the key. Yeah, but there's a 20-person conference call. Ah, yeah. Just tell them Horizon's down. It's all right. But you can prove your cloud is up. That's all that matters. Look, the cloud is still up. So, but yeah, I, yes, I do understand your point. And there really is no cute way of getting around it, unfortunately. <laughs> all right, guys. We're gonna start. Wrapping it up. What's that? Just come, get my car. I have a DJ appointment <laughs> that my boss just called me about, aka the runner of all OpenStack things for the OpenStack conference for Rackspace. So, <laughs> yes.
I've handed out so many business cards this conference, which is pretty cool. Thank you. This is my card. Just email me that you want to continue the lab. Tell me which the name of the lab, and I will set up resources for you, okay? Just give me a few days. Be kind to me. I have to recover from the 200 emails sitting in my inbox right now, so it may take me a few days to get to you, but I will set it up for you, okay? And these, like I said, the information uh, to do the lab will be on GitHub. I will not take it away, okay? okay. But thank you. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. I appreciate it. Yes. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Hey. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I, but the key is, is I need you to email. Well, you know what? I have your information. You don't have to email me. I won't, I won't talk to you. But do email me if you don't hear from me in like two days. Just remind me, okay? Uh, this will stay up there, so I mean, I can actually set up this configuration. Yes, you could. Yeah, absolutely. The key is, is having three instances or that are, uh, um, three instances that can talk to each other over public IP. It doesn't have to be internal, right? The only thing you use Ansible for is the use uh, yes, yes, yes. But I use OpenStack Ansible to deploy the clouds, but you don't have to. You can no, I mean, use whatever. For this week, I think that's the way I'm going to go. It uh, is. The it's guys are very interested in over the hierarchy of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> no, OpenStack Ansible is the way to go. I had two questions for you, seeing as you're right down in the depths of it. Sure. Um, first of all, was the URI, auth URI, 